Rick Higgins with you here again. You remember in our last video we covered the wiring in your Volkswagen. And so now we're going to assume that you've already taken care of all the wiring problems. And now my son Chad and I are going to help you to be able to diagnose some of the most common electrical problems you're going to have in your Volkswagen. And we're going to do this in a logical manner so that you're not out buying expensive electrical components that you don't need. Okay, now the first problem we're going to deal with is this. You go out and you get in your Volkswagen, you're all set to go someplace, you hit the key and nothing happens. Now where do you start to solve that problem? Well, you could think, well, maybe my starter's bad, you go out and you buy an expensive starter, or maybe my generator went bad. Well, before we can diagnose or check any of those components, we're going to have to have a hot battery, a battery that's in good shape, and now my son Chad is going to show you how to check a battery, how to do proper battery maintenance. So let's give our attention now to Chad. We got three batteries here. This is the battery out of the car. We're going to do some maintenance to it. And before we do though, let me tell you a couple of things about batteries themselves. Here's this battery. You've got plastic on the outside. It's a plastic case with lead plates and battery acid, which is sulfuric acid inside. Those lead plates are why these batteries are so heavy. Now a few other things you should know about batteries is that car batteries like this were not meant to run all the way down. So if you just sat there and cranked on your battery, if your car wouldn't start until your battery just finally would not turn your car over anymore and run it all the way down, you could damage or ruin your battery. At the very least, really shorten the life of it. So before you run your battery all the way down, charge it back up again. It'll last a lot longer. A couple other things is if you live up in the winter time, you might worry about your batteries freezing. If you had your battery out of your car, and you want to keep it in, say, your garage to keep it outdoors from the elements, you still might worry about it freezing. A charged battery will not freeze as easily as a battery that ran all the way down. And batteries will run down on their own. So if you have to store a battery outside of the car where it's not going to be up all the time, then make sure that it's charged every few weeks or so. Ch hook a charger to it for a little bit and bring it back up. It'll last a lot longer that way. If you let it run all the way dead, it could go bad. So, a couple of things we're going to do here as far as maintenance is concerned. One thing, we have a couple of different kinds of batteries here. You can see this is called a maintenance-free battery. We're still going to do some maintenance to it. But it doesn't have the caps on it like this one has. And if you have a battery that has the caps, you can pop the caps off and look down in to see the acid level. And if the acid level is below the plates, then you can take some distilled water and put it back in there, pour it back in each one of the cells until it's above Green the right plates. As soon as you have a load on it, it goes straight to red. 9.7 volts. And that's not a, that won't start the car very good. As soon as you, even if it did start the car, as soon as you cranked on a little bit, it'd go right dead. And that's good to keep in mind because even if the battery isn't the problem right now, it might be a problem later. And if you have it checked at the, one of the local parts stores, you'll be able to tell before it goes bad and you can replace the battery. When you replace the battery, make sure you get a battery that's small enough to fit under the back seat so that it doesn't short out by the top of these posts. Here. With a dab of petroleum jelly here, just to keep the weather off of it. Now we'll show you where this wire goes on the 66 and earlier cars. Okay, we've got the 66 motor here, so you can take a look at these wires and the way it hooks up to the generator on the 6 volt. Now that's on the 66 and older cars. Okay, now let's take a look at this connection. Now this is our wire that came from the starter there, and most of the older cars are going to have a connection like this. There's a screw that holds this little cap down and then this wire here continues on to the front and both of them slip under that little cap. And you can see here that these are soldered wires. Now Chad will be showing you how to do that later on. But these wires here have to have a very clean end on them and this terminal right here needs to be very clean when that goes in there. Now if they're not, let me go ahead and tighten that back down for you here. If they're not, you'll want to take this cap off of here and again, use your little wire brush and uh, some emery cloth to make all your surfaces nice and clean. Now some of the later cars might have a regulator that has ends on it like Okay, this. now let's take a look at our starters. 
Now this is a starter that we just took off of our car right here. Now this is what they call a self-supporting starter because it has a bearing in the nose of the starter right here and it doesn't depend on the shaft actually resting in the bushing that we were just taking a look at in the transmission a while ago. And here's that special bolt that I was talking about. Okay, this starter here is made by Bosch and this is a starter that came on the auto stick cars. But most everybody carries this starter and this is the one I use all the time because this starter is just a little bit more powerful than the regular Volkswagen starter, the one for the standard Beetle. Okay, now Volkswagen themselves, this is a Bosch starter, now Volkswagen themselves made a starter similar to that that was self-supporting, but it does have a little bit of a shaft on the end of it here. And you might have one of these on your car. It's a little bit different. You can see how the solenoid looks a little different on it. It's a little shorter and smaller and uh, there's not a whole lot of those starters around and when you go to replace your starter you probably won't get one like this but it doesn't matter the others will replace it. It will get that out of the way. Now actually I'll show you this starter here. This is another starter that you might find on your car and see how much smaller it is than the other starters. Actually I put them down here together. You can see how this is much shorter and you might think oh I've got a six volt starter on here because it's smaller Actually, this was just a starter that they used on the Volkswagens, actually on some of the later ones. And uh, just by their ingenuity or whatever, they figured out how to make this starter a little bit smaller and still turn the car over. And it will work. I mean, if you have one of these and you're just uh, using it, it works fine. This is the one that actually takes the bushing in the transmission like this. This way, so you, might, you can probably really see it. Now let me slide the 6 volt starter over here next to our 12 volt starter and you can see it on the starters themselves. I think you can probably see that on the end of the shaft, maybe if I bring them in a little closer like that. At the same time you can see that the 6 volt starter here now has a much bigger gear on it than the 12 volt too. Because the 6 volt flywheel is a little smaller around, has a smaller number of teeth. Now we can pull this assembly out and at the same time we'll be pushing the wires up from the bottom. And just let me show you real quick here what this looks like. Here's the assembly out of the car. Here's the wires that come up the bottom that go to the turn signal assembly. And the key switch wires go up through another hole in this thing. This is a pretty big collar right here. You can see how they're attached in there and go down through the inside of it. One thing else I might show you here while we're at it, if we can see that, the bushing on the top of this, or the bearing for the steering column here, now has the horn wire attached to it because this whole thing bolts to the dashboard and that's what uh, gives us the horn circuit now. So only the steering shaft is uh, part of the horn ground now on this here from 68 through 70. That brass ring on the back of the horn. Now the 71 horn is different than all the rest of them. It looks the same but on the back side it has this brass ring right here that's insulated from the rest of the horn. And on the other side you can see there's a wire comes through that attached to that. Screws on just like the wire that used to go through the middle of the steering column. But it just attaches at that brass ring and that makes the connection to the horn and now it just grounds to the steering shaft itself and the steering shaft is grounded on the other end now over the steering coupler. There's an extra wire there to make sure that shaft is grounded. So that's different on a 71 only. Idle, but you can see as soon as I push the button down, it goes right up. So that gives us a good idea. Let me go ahead and disconnect these wires and I'll show you how to go ahead and check the generator a little bit more. Now we could do these tests on the car, but it's easier to show it to you right here on the bench. We're going to be using this right here, and this little tool is called a continuity tester. It cost me about $2.50. It works real simply. When these two ends touch, the light lights. Shows the circuit's complete. First thing we're going to do is take the alligator clip in here and hook it to the DF side of the generator here, just like that. We're going to touch it touch the other end to the D plus side, it should light the light. If it didn't light the light, we'd know the generator was bad. We can see that works. The next thing we're going to do is touch it to the outside of the case here. You can see that lights the light. 
And many of the shop manuals will tell you when you go to change your generator that you can take the deck lid off of the car and then you can take the U-shaped brackets that hold the hinges for the deck lid and the spring, take that all off of there and then you can remove the top shroud while the engine's still in the car. Others will even tell you that you can unbolt your fan and then unbolt the shrouding on the front here and pull it out that way. Both of those ways are actually way too difficult. Other shop manuals will tell you that it's just as easy to pull the motor out of the car and then when everything's easily accessible, that, that's the way to do it. And that's the only way that we do it. Now we showed you how hey, with them all set up here, I think you can see there's quite a bit of difference now in size between the 6 volt generator and the 12 volt generator that we have right here and the alternator. And, in fact, if you look at the reinforcement rings here, that were in there, you can oh. see why you're not. Put that on there. Snug that up a little bit. I just twisted these wires around a screwdriver, put a little coil in them so you've got a little room to move in them at the same time they're not just hanging in the way of anything. Okay, we've got those on there. Now, you buy that the, separately, or if you buy the whole kit, then you get all of these things here, and it's all the light bulbs and everything that we need to convert our car to 12 volts. And we're going to show you then all the little things as the changes that you'll have to make to do that. And I'm going to start with the headlamp. I like to do it this way first, even though you wouldn't have to. And believe it or not, the solder sinks down in just as easily, even after it's crimped on there. And it holds it on the end of the wire really easily. We're going to heat that up. And you can see even with the wire on there real nice, and tight, the solder just soaks. What we just have to do is touch it to the terminal and it just soaks down into it. You can see even the wire that's showing right there has plenty of solder in it. If we turn it all the way around, you can see all different angles. It's soldered in there real good. Ground wire running to both. Then we need the wire that's goes to your headlight switch so that the lights come on when you turn on your headlights and that just plugs in right there and you can see the ground wire is shared with all of the well this is going to bring to a close another episode in our ongoing series of Volkswagen repair we hope that some of the fundamentals that Chad and I have shown you here is going to solve some of your current electrical problems and help prevent future ones as well well see you again next time <music>